After an epic battle, Raiden proved his strength to the Poltergast, and as promised, was rewarded with powerful crafting materials. Although the most important reward was the conversation that they had after the skirmish. The Poltergast shared a lesson from his past, about when he trusted and served an evil druid, which ultimately led to his long-term imprisonment in the dungeon. The Poltergast warned Raiden that he would either have to limit his power to ensure Supreme Calamitous never considers him a threat, or live with the fear of eventual betrayal if he was to grow more powerful than his master. Either way, it was in Raiden's best interest to seize the power for himself. He explained that in order to have a chance at beating Calamitous, Raiden needed to gain the power of the Devourer of Gods and Yaren. All the Poltergast asked for in return was for the freedom to take revenge upon the Druids once Raiden rose to power. Raiden agreed to the terms and prepared for the impending battle against the Devourer of Gods. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as a rogue class and we are in death mode. Last episode we defeated the Poltergast and the Ceaseless Void, which was the third and final Sentinel of the Devourer. So we're able to craft the Cosmic Worm and now we can fight the Devourer of Gods, which is going to be pretty awesome and tricky since it's death mode. But before we do that, I want to do a couple things to prepare. The first thing I want to do is upgrade these super healing potions. And that's actually something we could have done when we first entered post Moon Lord. And all it requires are unholy essence and super healing potions. And it does 250 life instead of 200, which is pretty good. And one thing I did in between episodes was I went to the ocean to farm up Leviathan. And I also got a natural Duke Fishron spawn. So I wanted to go ahead and open up some of these and see if we get the community. It's not really required that we get the community at this point, but it would be nice to have, and I figured I'd give it a few attempts. Out of 11 bags, we didn't get it, but it is a 1% drop rate, so it does take quite a while to find the community, but we'll get it for sure later on in the playthrough. Although we did get a Leviathan mask, which looks pretty cool. It's like a little dragon face. One thing that I wanted to show is that we have an arena that goes all the way across our world. It's a sky bridge. And I used the Louis AFK mod to craft that, which is super easy and super nice. You can just put a bridge all the way across your world. And the last thing I wanted to do before fighting the Devourer of Gods is to farm up the Dragon Folly. So let's head on over to the jungle. And the reason we're doing this is the Dragon Folly actually gives us a good mount that will help us run really quickly during the boss fight. So we can farm her up really easy at this point. It's quite an easy boss after we've defeated the Poltergast. And there we go, that's one clear. We got Senex's outfit, but we didn't get the summon, so I'll just keep on fighting this boss. It seems like this Phantasmal Ruin's doing really well against the Dragon Folly. And there we go, that's the fourth and final summon and there it is it says it summons a monstrosity and let's go ahead and take a look at what it does so we've got a little bumble burb mount and it looks so cool this can fly pretty well but the best part about this is how quickly it can run we're already up to 94 miles an hour and that's kind of where it levels off and if we fly we can go about the same speed go a little bit faster for moving up but yeah pretty dang cool this mount is going to help a lot on the devourer of gods i think so now let's go ahead and place a tent at a good point. This is kind of like the center of our arena. And if you can see, I've cleared out these islands above us because those are just going to get in our way if we ever do need to get off the arena. And then I've got torches right here to notify us that we've gone too far to the left because if we try to jump, we'll hit into that island. And lots of people have mentioned that this looks like a face. It's kind of got two faces. You've got these eyes and then the smiley face, and then you've got these kind of wonky eyes and the smiley face, and that's kind of like a nose. It almost looks like a frog maybe. And then we've got our planetoid over here, and I've got some torches right there to let me know that that's kind of the edge of that arena. And usually we don't need to have that far of an arena because we're switching directions every time the boss kind of circles us. So I think we're pretty much good to go for this fight. I've got the Blood Flare Armor, the Seraph Tracers, Elysian Aegis, the Absorber, 
the Affliction, Vampiric Talisman, and I added the Destroyer Emblem instead of the Deific Amulet, and that's just to get more damage. And then we've got the Heart of the Elements, and all of them are rolled to Menacing, and we've got a whole bunch of buffs. I've even included Tequila, Moscow Mule, and Tequila Sunrise, and those are going to help give us some added damage. So let's go ahead and start this up, and we can get on our little mount <laughs> and see how this goes. Man, we're doing a lot of damage. Easy damage. Well, we almost died already. Okay, we gotta get used to this. We're doing good damage though, so I'm happy. And we can try using this attack. Oh my gosh, that did so much damage. Oh, that shouldn't have done my attack right there. What? Rogue is really good at this part of the game. I am quite impressed. This is going to be much easier than it was on Magnus, I think. We just got to be really careful about the head. And we're almost done. Ooh, that was close. Maybe we should switch to the Phantasmal Ruin. And there we go. We got the first phase down pretty easily. And now we just need to do pretty well against these Sentinels. They're always kind of an easy part of the fight. It's good to kind of mess around with different weapons here and get an idea of which ones will do well against the different Sentinels. It seems like the Valediction does well against this one, just because it's so homing. And we just got to be careful not to take too much damage during this phase. Because we don't want to start off the next part of the boss fight already having taken damage. Actually, maybe we'll throw some of these out, because they home pretty well. If we throw too many of those spears during that part of the fight, it can get pretty crazy. Okay, I think this is probably going to do well against this boss too. Yeah, that killed it really quickly. The Phantasmal Ruin did some pretty crazy lag there, so we're just going to need to be careful about how we use it. And I think on those bosses, we'll probably want to skip it, and we can use it on Cygnus. That worked really well. And here we go. Now we've got the next phase of the fight going. And we can get on our mount and start moving quickly. Follow the boss closely. Yeah, we can follow the boss as fast as it can go. That's incredible. Ooh, that was close though. Whoa, we're all ready to this phase. Okay, now we can just throw these and run as fast as we can. Oh my gosh. We're just going to use our adrenaline because I knew we were going to get hit there. And I'm just going to use Rage and try to get around here. It's lagging so much. Oh my gosh, we're just taking hits here. Uh-oh. We got to get in position here. Oh my gosh. Oh no, we're taking so many hits. No! <laughs> well, that was quite exciting. I can't believe our first try we got down to like 20%. I think we're going to be just fine for this boss. So it looks like if we throw too many of our phantasmal runes, we will have an issue with the boss. Like it'll start lagging too much. So once we start getting lag, we just switch back to Valediction and let the lag 
kind of leave and subside. And we got hit by the head. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's something that I want to point out. Death mode, even if you're full health, if you get hit by the head, you are dead. So right there, I was losing focus for just a second, thinking about which weapon I was going to use, and it hit me. So we got to be super careful. Even though the first phase is really easy, we just got to be very careful not to get hit by the head. As I almost get hit by the head. My goodness. And there we go. Phase one has been defeated. Oh my gosh, we don't have to do the other part of the fight anymore. That is like the biggest quality of life thing ever. Thank you, Calamity Devs. That is the best thing. <laughs> we can just fight the boss now. We don't have to worry about fighting the Sentinels every time. That's seriously like the best. I really appreciate that. Ooh, we took some hits there. That was rough. Yeah, we gotta be careful. Just the lasers are doing a ton of damage to us. Oh no, we got killed by lasers? Okay, well, at least we got past that. And I'm just gonna use it, because we'll probably get hit by lasers. And we'll get around them. Ooh, we walked right into that. That wasn't good. No, it came out right at the wrong spot. Oh, no. That was so close. I pressed the normality relocator like an instant too late. I could have sworn I had pressed it. And we're doing a lot of damage. Excellent. Down to 35% in one hit. That was incredible. Oh my gosh, that was the luckiest save ever. Okay, we gotta get some hearts. Okay, now we throw some spears. We're actually doing it. We might get them. We just gotta keep throwing these. We've got a Discord ready. I don't care about the lag. Gotta get them. There we go. We got them. We gotta have them. Oh my gosh, she was coming at us so fast. Oh my gosh, that was so scary. <laughs> oh man. We defeated the Devourer of Gods. And let's see what we got. We got the melee weapon. I thought we got the rogue one. We've got the Nebulous Core, we've got Cosmolite, and we've got this Death Hail Staff. And of course, we got the Devourer of God's Lore. It boosts our true melee, but makes us take more damage. Honestly, with the Phantasmal Ruin, you can do such good damage, but the problem is it can lag so much. And so once when those three little worms spawn, that's when it got super laggy. Let's go back to base, and we can craft so much cool stuff now. 
Ooh, our bandit's even selling something. Let's take a look. She's selling the venerated locket. And that's 25 platinum. And fortunately, with all the farming we've been doing, we actually have enough to get it. And I know that's actually a really good item. Overall, I'm really happy about the changes that they made to that fight because it's so nice to be able to just go right to phase two and not have to fight the sentinels. So I just put a bunch of our accessories into this crafting station and now we can combine the Asgard's Valor and the Elysian Aegis with Cosmolite and form the Asgardian Aegis. And this is an incredible accessory, so very excited to have that one. It looks like before we can craft this tier of armor and weapons, we're going to need to fight the Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon and get some of those energies so we can craft our Draydon's Forge and then we can start crafting a lot of really good upgrades. So I think it's time to pop a Zerg Potion and let's start doing these events. These events are all buffed because we've destroyed the Devourer of Gods and so they're going to do a lot more damage and be a lot more powerful. The pump kings are going to give us the most of this nightmare fuel, so I'm just going to focus on killing those guys and then just slaying some of these enemies on the ground in between pump kings. Yeah, we're doing really well here with the extra damage we're getting from this venerated locket. What that does is basically summons a second one of your weapons that rains down from the sky. And one of the things I love about the Valediction is it's got like no lag, so it's really nice. And I'm going to go ahead and use a loot magnet because some people have recommended that I do that a little bit more often because that ensures that we're not hitting the spawn limit of items on the ground because you definitely don't want to do that during one of these events. And this is actually the first time we've done a pumpkin moon on the Raiden playthrough because we actually didn't really need to do it in hard mode, so we kind of skipped this one. And I figured we would be doing this at this point in the game anyways, so I kind of saved it for now. And let's do another loot magnet. Grab all that stuff. Oops, taking hits. And let's just go ahead and use some rage and knock out some of these enemies pretty quickly here. It's always nice to just mess around with Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moons after doing the Devourer of Gods fight. It's so intense, and then this is just so simple. Well, from that event, we got 306 Nightmare Fuel, which is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is open our Fairy Merchant, quickly sell all of this other stuff that we don't need, and then we can start up another fight, and we can do the Frost Moon this time and get the rest of our energies that we need. So I just switched it tonight, and let's go ahead and pop a Zerg Potion, and then we can use our Naughty Present and start this off. Just completely demolishing these enemies. This is so fun. Oh, we already have one of the Ice Queens. We gotta be careful, they're really doing some damage. Oh no, we can't die on this. Okay, at least we got one. And I need to stay focused. And let's turn off Zerg. That'll probably help us. Okay, we got another Ice Queen. And hopefully we can get some hearts in the arena. Okay, here's some hearts over here. Excellent. Okay, let's do a loot magnet, grab everything. And let's see how many endothermic energies we've got. We've got 95. There we go. That was a pretty clean clear. And that's another one. I think we're probably good now. We've definitely killed enough of these enemies. So to craft the Draydon's Forge, we just need to have a hard mode forge. Hard Mode Anvil, the Ancient Manipulator, Luminite, Cosmolite, 20 Nightmare Fuel, and 20 Endothermic Energy. And there we go, the Draydon's Forge. So the first thing I want to do is craft the Sponge. So in order to craft the Sponge, we need this Ascendant Spirit Essence, which is the combination of Phantoplasm, Nightmare Fuel, and Endothermic Energy. 
And here it is. So let's craft a whole bunch of these. Maybe like 15. That's probably good. So now we should be able to do the sponge. Excellent. And the sponge combines the ambrosial ample and the absorber and basically creates one of the best tank items in the game. And then we can also do the Rampart of Deities, which is the combination of the Frigid Bulwark and the Deific Amulet. Now let's go ahead and buy a Devourer of Gods treasure bag because we are actually all out of Cosmolite. So now it looks like we can actually craft about five different weapons. So let's go ahead and start crafting a few of these. So first let's do the Galaxy Smasher. And it's just the upgrade to the Stellar Contempt. So let's craft that. And it got rolled as flimsy, nice. And then we can do the Executioner's Blade. That's just basically Cosmolite and Nightmare Fuel. And we can craft the Hypothermia. That's just Cosmolite, Endothermic Energy, and Ruinous Souls. And we can also craft the Penumbra, which is just Cosmolite, Nightmare Fuel, and Ruinous Souls. And the last weapon I think we can craft right now is the God's Paranoia. So that's just a couple Cosmolite, Spiky Balls, and Ascendant Spirit Essence. So I've rerolled some of these weapons, and let's go ahead and see what they can do. We've got the Galaxy Smasher right here, which does some pretty good damage. We're doing like 50,000, 60,000. And then we've got the Penumbra. So this weapon's original particle doesn't home, but it explodes into a homing particle. But if we're doing direct hits, we can do like 49, 50,000 damage. Pretty powerful. So let's go ahead and try the Hypothermia. This is pretty awesome. This is like the Crystal Shard spell for the Mage class, but it does like 50,000 damage. And we got the Executioner Blade. Now this looks really awesome. <laughs> it homes in and shoots very rapidly. And then we have God's Paranoia. And that just basically throws a particle that latches onto the boss. Pretty sweet. And then it disappears after a little bit. And this can stack up to 10. So we definitely need to get a full stack of 10 of these because I have a feeling it'll be pretty dang good. Well, I think that's a good place to end this episode. We've defeated the Devourer of Gods and we've got some new weapons. We've got some new accessories, new crafting station, all sorts of good stuff. And next episode, we can defeat the Devourer of Gods again just to try it out with our new weapons and stuff and farm up a little bit more Cosmolite. And then next episode, we can even fight the old Duke, which will be really fun. And we can prepare for our Yarn fight. So lots of good stuff coming up. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this series. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.